Liberty Nation with Tim Donner. The current CEO of General Motors, GM, is no William Knudsen. When called upon by President Roosevelt to coordinate the retooling of the auto industry to World War II production of massive amounts of armaments, Big Bill Knudsen, CEO of GM from 1937 to 40, rose to the occasion. The current CEO, well, not so much. So begins an article on LibertyNation.com entitled General Motors Wears Your World War II Spirit by the newest and most welcome addition to the Liberty Nation family, Dave Patterson, military affairs contributor and former principal deputy under Secretary of Defense. It takes us back, this does, to the days when the nation pulled together in a time of war, which is essentially where we are right now, except the enemy is a virus instead of a Nazi dictator. And Dave Patterson joins us now. Dave, welcome aboard. Tim, it's great to be with you. Well, better to have you. Let me start with a broad question. How would you compare the response of the nation's business leaders in this corona crisis to the response 75 years ago during World War II? I think I'd characterize our business leaders today as cautiously eager to help, you know, in what is clearly a pandemic crisis. You know, not to point out the obvious, but we live in an entirely different world than our fathers and grandfathers did. You know, large companies, quite frankly, are global in their business interests and have perceived their obligations as important outside of America. That was not the case 75 years ago. Indeed. America first, putting America first, was hardly a controversial idea in 1940. Now, President Trump has invoked the Defense Production Act, but has not yet not yet actually put it into practice. Explain for us what powers the Defense Production Act gives the president, whether and in what situations it's likely he'll have to employ it, and how the CEO of GM was slow to answer the emergency call to produce not cars but ventilators. Well, I think that you have a very good question there. Yeah, last uh, Friday, President Trump did invoke the uh, Defense Production Acts specifically to compel General Motors, as the president put it, to accept, perform, and prioritize federal contracts for ventilators. Now, the DPA also fortifies the president's authority to do other things, like prosecute those who engage in price gouging and hoarding, for example, which has happened frequently during this crisis. Now, President Trump was authorized to do this because he had met the standard, the legal standard, by declaring ventilators and protective equipment as essential to the national defense. Is it reasonable to conclude that the president invoked the Defense Production Act just in order to give himself the leverage to force businesses to repurpose and produce vital supplies and equipment? Or do you get the sense he'll actually have to use this most intrusive of government interventions into the private sector? Well, I think initially President Trump was, as he said, reluctant to invoke DPA because, you know, as you say, this is a very intrusive uh, tool and intrusive into the business of the private sector. Uh, President Trump said that he hoped he would not, it would not be necessary. But I think that we can agree that President Trump is not a patient man. And when it appeared as though GM was not negotiating the price of the ventilators with a sense of urgency and more business as usual, he acted. You know, I think we should applaud him for that. Well, the elite media is hardly doing that, but then what else is new? Now, from your article specifically, Dave, on the issue of patriotism in America's 21st century business community, if... You asked this question in your article. If the United States faces the prospect of increasing its industrial base production to meet the challenge of a significant defense crisis, could or would the GMs, Fords, Apples, and Googles do it? How would you answer that question? 
Well, it's not clear to me that it would be their first instinct, as much as I regret saying that. In 2011, for example, President Obama actually invoked the DPA against the telecommunications industry. And he threatened them with criminal penalties in order to get detailed information on what foreign countries were supplying in terms of hardware and software for their networks. And he did this in an effort to thwart Chinese cyber attacks. How do you think the ever fewer remaining members of what we call the greatest generation, the generation that fought and won essentially two world wars, one to the east, the other to the west. How would they view America's response to a crisis that could be the most threatening since World War II? You know, Tim, I believe that they would be disappointed. Not that companies today haven't stepped up in this crisis, because many have. They would be disappointed in the private sector generally, and I believe in our government specifically, for letting the country get into this deplorable condition. You know, we're being held hostage to foreign suppliers for critical products that are essential in national emergencies. China provides the propellant for Hellfire missiles, for example, and we use those in our efforts against terrorists. And how in the world did we get into the position of where China provides over 90% of our most common and necessary antibiotics, vitamins, and other pharmaceuticals? This has to be turned around. We get into this perverse situation where we get into a military conflict with China and need their help to win. And that about says it right there. And of all the things that are going to change when all this is over, our relationship with China has to be at the top of the list. Dave, thanks for joining us. Hey, thank you, Tim. I appreciate being with you. Dave Patterson, military affairs contributor for LibertyNation.com. Quick break, and then we're back to discuss Joe Biden's latest shot in the dark. <laughs> 